Welcome to the How to Love series presented to you by Love and Wild Woods. In these uncertain and what feels like frightening times, we are all looking for something that would give us some reinsurance and faith in the future. But in the times of the dark night of the soul, there is always a glimmer of light that gets brighter as we move closer to it, and soon that light overcomes the darkness and we feel happy again. That beacon of light we have been told throughout the ages is love. Love is the great light that vanishes the shadows. Love is the light that lifts our spirits and gets us free from our fears. It always been so and it always will be so and it is so now. Love is the answer to all of our troubles and our sufferings. But what does that mean exactly? You may ask yourself, and how would love change me, my life, and the world? Well, in this short series, we will explore this, and more to the point, we will soon learn how to love better. One of the most interesting things I have found in the retelling of people's near-death experiences is the consistent message that love is the most important thing to the creator of all things, the great God, goddess, the great father, mother, and to the rest of all creation. It seems that our achievements in life, our worldly possessions, and our melodramas don't really seem to carry a whole lot of interest. The most important thing is that we express love in our encounters with each other. It would appear that the heavenly hosts are watching to see if we are expressing the virtues of love and not whether or not we acquire a lot of money or won some worldly award of achievement. Which being eternal beings, that means that I was to join here on earth and for the short time that it is, would make more sense. It would make more sense that the greater and eternal part of ourselves would be more of importance than that which we will eventually leave behind. So what is love and why is it so vitally important? Well, I will share my view with you as it has been revealed to me. However, by no means is this view absolute. For no one can put a, any one label on the creator of all things. For it is all things and yet it is no thing at all. This is my experience in brief. I grew up viewing the Creator as God or the Great Heavenly Father as most people do through religions worldwide. And although this is the truth, it was revealed to me that day that it is not the entire truth. One day, a very ordinary day, I was in my bedroom and something miraculous happened. The divine creator revealed itself to me by audibly calling out my name. At first, I didn't see anyone in the room and so I shrugged it off. Then I heard my name called again. This time I thought perhaps it was a spirit of something trying to get my attention. So I sat still for a moment, 
half anticipating to hear more and also half feeling rather reluctant to find out. There was nothing but silence. So after a few minutes, I decided to shrug it off and went about what I was doing once again. Then the voice came again. But then, this time, the voice was louder. And the direction in which it came from was right above me, as if someone was standing right over me, looking down upon me and calling my name. It was a female voice that held power and strength and kindness. Then suddenly, which was quite extraordinary, my spirit leaped up with joy. And I knew in the whole of my being somehow that it was Mother, Divine Mother, the Mother of us all. Something in me knew her. Something in me had been waiting for her return. And something inside of me then felt suddenly deeply sad and ashamed that I had progressed through my lifetimes without any thought of her. It was a time of joy in our reunion and it was also a wretched time for I felt that I had abandoned her within myself. You may not be able to comprehend or relate to my experience, and that's okay. I'm merely sharing this with you to give you some context to my understanding and my journey of learning what love is and also learning how to express it, not only in the divine way expressed through masculinity, but also through femininity and the beauty and the importance of the balance of both expressions through ourselves and how they are both expressed through divine creator itself. To get a better understanding of divinity, it is wise to view it as a loving, sacred union of masculine and feminine power. And due to this wonderful sacred union, all things that is derive from this magnificent union of oneness. It is said we shall create man in our image. We shall create them male and female. My life's journey has been to get more acquainted with the female aspect of this sacred union, while of course loving our Divine Father as well. I don't have to choose between them. For both of the Divine Parents love me and love all of us. So finally, I have decided to act upon inspiration and share what I have come to know about expressing love in everyday ways. I call it the ABC's 123's Expressions of Love. Things that we can do simply that would have a great effect not only on ourselves and our state of being, but on others too. In the following short videos, I will be speaking about the virtues of love and giving some advice on how to implement them in your life so that you can play your part in expanding your capacity to love and nurture others as you live through your life.
So be sure to tune in. Until then, may the great God and Goddess, the Holy Trinity, which includes you, bless you for all eternity.